All right, guys, welcome back to the Engineering Crucible. We're going to be doing problem 6, 7 from the Fundamentals of Chapter 6. I've been MIA for quite a while, so <clears throat> let's get all the, the rust off this. All right. So we're going to be doing uh, method of sections. That's what we're going to be working on. And method of section is definitely the, the one section from this chapter that you want to focus on because your professor is going to give you... Mm, Problems from in your exam, you're going to be getting problems from this section, not method of uh, of joints because the method of joints takes too long. Okay, um, so let's let's get started with this. So they want you to determine the force mem the force in members BC, CF, and FE. Okay, and <clears throat> this kind of a trick when you have an overhanging beam like this. So notice how the supports are over here. Okay. So when you have the supports on this side, you not you might not need to determine the reactions at G and A, okay? So for this one, uh, you're looking at B, C, C, F, and F, E. So let's see. B, C is right here. C, F uh, is right here. And F, E is right here, okay? So you want to make your cut through the joints that they're asking you to find the force in, okay? So you don't want to make a cut here because they're not asking you for GE, EA, or whatever, okay? You're going to make a cut through the ones that they ask you for. So you're going to be making a cut through here, okay? So then, once you make that cut, all right, you're going to analyze either this section, the one on the left-hand side, or the right-hand side, okay? So notice how if we analyze the left-hand side, we need to find the reaction forces at G and A. But if we analyze the right-hand side portion, we just have to, we already have all the given forces here, and we're just going to find all these unknowns that we need. Okay, so we don't have to do the extra step of finding the reactions. Okay, so let's start it that way. Let's find the shortcut. So I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw a section, the, the section on the right hand side so it's going to look like this. Okay. And then I kind of cut it right here and right here. Okay. And here is FE. And notice how I'm drawing them all away from uh, the joints. Okay. So I'm drawing them all in tension. That's going to be my assumption, that they're all in tension. So F, C, and then B, C. Okay. So start, start like this. Once you get used to the notation and the direction of these forces, then you can start flipping them and saying, okay, I'm going to assume it's a compression and so on. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, so I assume they're all in tension. Now let's add all the given forces that we have here. Uh, at joint C, so this is joint C, D, and E. At joint C, we have a 600 pound load. At joint D, 800 pounds. Okay, and that's it. And then notice here they have a... Uh, 45 uh, 45 degree 45 45 90 uh, triangle so just take note of that from the get-go okay that way you know how to um, you know find the angles between these uh, these things All right these are gonna be 45 degree angles and we have four feet and then four feet okay so now just like in method of joints, you pretty much only did uh, forces in the X, forces in the Y, okay? Method of sections, the most efficient way to, to do these problems is just take a moment about a point, okay? So let's see, let's take a moment about a point where I'm going to be able to eliminate the most unknowns, okay? And that point is going to be F, okay? I, I call it the ghost point, okay? Because... Well, you know, FC is supposed to go like this. This is point F, okay? It's not really on our diagram, but we know the distances to that point. We know it's four feet, okay? 
And if we take a moment about F, okay, and say it's in static equilibrium, all right, FC and FE both coincide with that point, okay? So they're not going to cause any rotation, so they don't cause any moment, all right? So the only forces that are going to contribute a moment to this is going to be BC. So we know it's going to be BC times a distance of 4. Okay. And then, again, we're going to take, this is 400, 4 feet. This 600 pound force times 4. Okay, this force is trying to make the, the whole structure rotate clockwise. Okay, so it's going to be negative. BC is trying to make the structure rotate clockwise. So again, we're going to have a negative. And this 800 pound force, again, it's going to be 800 pounds times what distance? Well, it's going to be this 4 plus this 4. So it's going to be 8. And again, it's trying to crank this like whole structure in the counterclockwise direction. I'm sorry, in the clockwise direction. So it's negative. Okay. This leaves me with BC. So 4 times 600 plus 8 times 800 divided by 4. Okay, that gives me a minus 220. So 2200 pounds. Okay, notice this negative over here. This negative is telling me that BC, how I assumed BC was going to be in tension, BC is actually in compression. Okay. You can circle your answer like that. Okay. So that's why I said assume everything in tension initially because then when this negative comes out in your answer, then you know it's going to be the opposite of what you assumed. If this was positive, then I assumed correctly, which is going to be, okay, it's 2,200 pounds in tension, okay? The next thing will be to take another moment. And again, locate the point where you can cancel out the most forces. And let's give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, you should have assumed point C or guessed point C. Or not even guessed, just gone with point C from the get-go. Point C allows you to eliminate BC, FC, and the 600 pounds on C already, okay? So we don't have to worry about this force and FE, okay? So let's see. 800 pounds is trying to make it rotate clockwise times 4. So that's the distance to bring this line of action over to C. Then we have FE, which is trying to counteract that rotation so it's going to be it's actually rotating counterclockwise so fe and then the distance again this vertical distance of four feet okay now the force go away and then you get fe is 800 pounds positive okay so my assumption is correct fe is in tension Okay, so far so good. Okay, last but not least, we want to find FC. Okay, and the easy way to do this, so once you're done, once you've exhausted these moment equations, just use one more uh, static equilibrium equation, and that will be the forces in the, let's use the y direction for this case. Okay, so what are my forces pointing in the y direction? Not for this, not for here, not for this, but for this portion that we've been working on, okay? So what are those four? It's going to be minus 600, minus 800, right? And then we need to take the Y component of FC. F those diagonal ones are the most annoying ones because they're, you always have to split them into an angle. I mean, sorry, into the XY components because they're always at an angle, okay? So we know that the Y component here so we know that this angle here we said was 45 degrees. I know it's so messy, but excuse me. Right? So we know it's going to be cosine for the x direction and sine for the y direction. Okay? So hopefully you're with me with that because we've been working on this since like chapter 2. 
or three. Okay, so let's take the y component of this. So it's going to be plus fc sine 45. Okay, which is square root of two over two. All right. All right. So 600 plus 800, and then divided by sine 45. And then let me just do one thing. Okay, I'm in degrees. Perfect. All right. And then fc. And again, notice how our answer is going to be positive here. So it's 1979. The year I was born. Just kidding. 1979. All right. Uh, 0.9 pounds in tension. Oh, let's move this. No wonder it seems so small. Okay. And that is it. Okay. And that's it for method of sections. So remember, pretty much, you already know static equilibrium equations. Three forces in the x, y, and z, three moments in the x, y, and z, all equal to zero. Okay? Now, with trusses, if the method of sections is cut through a portion where you intersect all these members. Okay? Don't make a cut anywhere else that you're not going to be able to find B, C, C, F, and F, E, or whatever they're asking you, okay? All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for uh, watching this video and keeping up with the Engineering Crucible. Take it easy, guys.